so uh hello Yule. Yule. Yes, Yule. It was okay. Yule. Yeah. Yule. Yule. And perfect. welcome to my office. Thank <laughs> you. This is my office during Transylvania Open and That's a great I mean office. all the best players in this tournament are coming here to tell me about them. Yeah, talk about them. So, yeah. welcome here. Welcome to my Taikan. Uh, I know that you have a, a bit of a thing with Porsche because you're in a special team in Germany, right? Yeah, exactly. The Porsche talent team. Yes. Yeah. What does it mean? Well, we have uh, three different kind of teams in Germany and uh, Porsche is, let's say, the, the biggest sponsor of the Federation. All right. So um, they help us, um, give us some money. Um, so we can have a physio or play tournaments right. uh, the whole year. So it's a really good thing for us players because it's starting pretty early. Um, so you, it, when you're in the team, you have the chance to really, you know, have a coach with you the whole year and play a lot of tournaments. Cool. Have you have you had the chance to drive these cars till now? Yeah, or? I did. Um, Which um, ones? The Taycan. All right. Cool. And I don't know which which one, but it's a pretty nice car. I, I mean, say. this is this is a question here. I have like 15 questions for you. I didn't even start now. So uh, one of the questions would be, what would you like more, the 911 or a Taycan? You know, your mm -hmm. gasoline style or yeah. uh, electric style? <laughs> no, um, I mean, of course, I like ele electric cars because especially now with the um, yeah, with the life we are living, it's obviously better to have a, an electric car, but um, yeah, I prefer hearing the car, to be honest. I also <laughs> have an uh, All right. AMG, so it's... All right, yeah. so you're a sports car yes, person. Yes, I like driving fast. Nice! Yeah. Oh, you, so you're driving like you're playing. Yeah. Fast and strong. Yeah. Let's put it like this. By the way, congratulations for your win. Thank you. Yeah, the match was yesterday yeah. against Anna Bogdan, which is a local favorite. How was it? It was a great match. Um, I mean, the the fans were amazing yesterday. The atmosphere was really good. And yeah, I think it was a pretty good match from both of us, especially um, the first set was really intense. We had some longer rallies. Um, I mean, the score, of course, was 7-6 and 7-5 in the tiebreak, so it was really close. And in the second set, I had the feeling that I was really, uh, yeah, playing really good tennis. Um, so it was tough for her to to keep up the level. I first saw you playing this year in Stuttgart mm -hmm. because I was there, and you lost against Bianca Andreescu. Yeah. yeah. But from then on, you've had a pretty spectacular season. So congratulations for your season. Congratulations for your first quarterfinal in Wimbledon. Thank you. A nice, really nice tournament there. Uh, how do you see yourself in like five years from now? Because now you're one of Germany's most rated talent, talents. Everybody's watching you now. Uh, how do you see yourself in five years from now? Well, this is my first season actually, so um, I'm pretty happy with the way it's going. So hopefully I can continue like this or play even better. Um, to, I don't know, play my first semi-final in a Grand Slam or win a Grand Slam would be perfect. So, um, yeah, of course, the next five years I want to be one of the best players in the world. I want to be, um, yeah, on, on top and play on the biggest stages, win the biggest trophies that we have in tennis and that would be the best. Case. So a Grand, a Grand Slam or number one in the world, which will be first? Nah, I would, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good and a <laughs> tough question. But I would also always pick the Grand Slam, I think. All right. Yeah, I mean, of course, number one in the world is is great. But if you're the one in the w number one in the world and you didn't win a Grand Slam your whole career, I think it's a bit... All right. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. It's a context, yes, contextual yeah. thing. All right. Uh, by the way, which is your favorite slam? You've been to each of them. Yeah. And you've seen them. Yeah. I guess Wimbledon now. I mean, it would be the logical answer for you. You look very well on grass, by the way. I yeah. mean, your your playing style fits the grass. I mean, every Grand Slam is special, right. and Wimbledon is still a bit different. Um, the people are different. The 
the venue is different. It's just so, I don't know. I think the perfect word to describe Wimbledon is royal. All right. And that fits. Uh, so, so you really feel special? Then. Yeah, it f just feels special with the grass, with the white outfits and everything is so clean and yeah, it's just nice to play in Wimbledon but I, I also like, I don't know, it's tough to say to be honest because I also love the people in, in Australia, they're always so like open and so kind and happy, always in a good mood. And the, the happy slam, yeah, as they call exactly. it. Yeah. And the, the uh, side of the Australian Open is so big and mm. it's just really nice. Yeah. So you're a German and as a German you had like your uh, sources of inspiration, let's put it like this. In Germany there were always good players, but I guess one of them was your idol. I don't know if in Germany or outside Germany, but who was the player that you liked most when you were growing? Rafa Nadal. Oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah, you're German. I yeah. can pick Rafa Nadal. So, you're a fan of Rafa? Yeah. Nice. 100%. Um, nice. Yeah. It, that should have been a question, not about the other two. But uh, Rafa Nadal, why Rafa? I always admire him, like, since I started playing. I don't know, I always watch his matches. I put an alarm even when I had school so I could All wake right, up cool. at night and watch the matches. Oh, so you're a. Uh, Hardcore fan. Right? Yeah, I okay. mean now I still I have to you know I cannot do it anymore, especially <laughs> when I play matches. But um, yeah, I just love how he's playing, like his did attitude you, on court, the forehand. It's just amazing. Did you have the chance to talk with him or to meet him? Now for the first time in in New York, he was practicing on the Arthur Ashe, and we had the court um, the session after. So, yeah, I met him and we just like, you know, just had hi and good luck for the tournament. Right. And yeah, it was actually, we took a, a picture together. It was, it's for me, the, the only person I would ask um, if I could get a picture with him. So, um, nice. and my coach <laughs> knows him pretty well. Um, so they play doubles against each other. So, cool. So I, yeah. can, I cannot wait for your Instagram reel when you were, will play with him on, I don't know, training or something. Oh, they would be amazing, like Iga did and yeah. or mixed, they would be great. But I I mean, let's see, it's going to be tough because he's not playing By that long way, anymore. By the way, about Iga. Yes. <laughs> you stole her set. Yeah. And that was a great result for everyone because, of course, you did a great Wimbledon. But when you, when you played with Iga, you were like uh, one set uh, away from winning with her. How was that match, US Open? It was great. I mean, especially the first set was really good. I felt, yeah, I felt good on court. I like playing on, on big stages, on bigger courts. And I think I played a perfect set against yep. her in the first set. I, she, she didn't have any chance. And I think that was also the key point of the match because I started you know, thinking about it a bit too much, <laughs> and I think that's also normal. So the wind, the, the wind took your yeah, took yeah, your head, yeah. Yeah, it was the first time I played right. against the world number one, and then against her, and you know, she just plays amazing tennis and had a great season oh, so yeah. far. So it's it's different. Of course, you can win a set, but you have to you know keep going and and finish it, and that's something I have to learn because I'm still young and still new on tour so hopefully next time uh, talking about mental and about how the possible win get in your brain got in your brain I have one question it's a common question for every every uh, player I'm interviewing here tennis we know or we all know that tennis is mental technical and physical how would you put this in percentages and I warn you the answer to this question is very different mm -hmm. and it depends on the player. No, I would always put the mental part on top, of course, because right. it's for me, it's the most important thing in tennis. There are so many players who maybe don't have the strongest game, strongest strokes or whatever, but they are still, you know, consistently in the top 100 playing Grand Slams. Mm -hmm even winning tournaments because they are just 100% committed to the game and always you know play every point with 100% so it's really tough to beat them and that's because 
yeah, men the mental part is just the most important thing in tennis, I would say. Um, I also have a question about which was the most challenging, difficult player you've ever faced on a court. Is it Iga now? I guess I have the answer, but uh, you know it better than me. Because mm. everybody wants to beat Iga, especially this season now. Yeah, maybe, maybe Iga, yeah. That's the first name that comes to my mind now. Um, because it's just different to play against the number one in the world. All right. And why, why is it different? Yeah, because you she's... You think differently about the match? When no, not or? really, but it's just the, the meaning of the match is okay. bigger, I would say. I mean, if you beat, a, let's say, number 60 in the world, of course it feels different. Um, yeah, it's just a win, but so it's otherwise. just it's, of course it's just a win, but the the meaning of the win is is much bigger, I would say. Mm. So, um, you, you know, if you win, you're gonna be in every newspaper and website yeah, in the world. So it's, yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, which was your best win until now in tennis? I can mm -hmm. guess the win <laughs> against the net. Yes, Antave, I would say in right. Net, yeah. Yeah, so that yeah. was a demolition there. Yeah, because yeah, it was bagel. my first <laughs> top 10 win. Um, I played a great match on court one in Wimbledon, on grass, second round. So it was, I would say, the yeah the biggest win so the far. The perfect match till now. Yeah. It was 6-4, 6-0? Six, six, uh, yeah. Like that? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Perfect. I watched that game on television and it was like, wow, this is Jule from Stuttgart. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. I remember that, that's yeah. cool. Um, perfect. Now, one question about, well, two more questions about tennis. I mean, it's one, but whatever. Uh, tell me one player that should have won a Grand Slam until now, but didn't. A man or woman, does well, matter? Does matter. Um, man, I would say... Okay, I mean, I have to there say are Zverev of for, the, for the man, I would All say right. Zverev. Um, so Sasha. But um, I think Berrettini would have also deserved a Grand Slam, to be honest, because he's playing such great tennis. The serve and the forehand, I mean, it's a joke. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. And woman, I mean, there are so many, I think. I know. Um, but in women, there are many that won. Yeah, it's not but like also many that would have deserved to win a Grand Slam. Um, like Jennifer Brady, who played finals right. in the Australian Open. Didn't expect that. Yeah, I know her. Maybe that's why, but yeah. um, she played a great tournament and she would have deserved to, to beat Osaka, for example. Cool. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice answer. <laughs> I mean, Angie won a Grand Slam, so I cannot yeah, beat yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is her, by the way? She, she's great, I think. Yeah, cool. we just uh, talked in New York. I congratulated her, and since then I, I haven't seen her. Yeah, well, she has yeah. some things to do. Now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, different and most important. Yeah, I mean, very important for her. Good. So now the funny questions. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain tennis to a blind person? Just try to. Yeah, I'm, I'm blind now, okay. but I'm driving, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> try to, to, to uh, describe this beautiful sport to a blind person so that he or she could really love it. Yeah, you have like a yellow fluffy ball <laughs> and everyone is trying to, to get it, to hit it, maybe as, yeah, let's say as hard as, hard as she or he can. And it's really tricky because sometimes, you know, the ball is not not going where you want it to go um, and yeah you just really have to yeah be really ready to play a rally sometimes and be be tough and run from the right side to the left side a lot um, a lot <laughs> yeah but it depends on the on the opponent but anyway yeah. yeah but it can be really fun if you have a great day if you're feeling the ball if you have a um, yeah, if you're feeling great that day, you're moving good, then it can be really fun. And the ball ha has a fist size. Yeah. Let's put it like this. Yeah. So you can understand. Yeah. All right. Good. One question. 
Um, what would you have done if you wouldn't be a tennis player? Um, when I was younger, I always wanted to, to work with uh, pets, let's say, okay. animals. But, uh, yeah, I mean, now I, I cannot imagine myself doing that doing I mean, that doing so, being a vet or yeah something? yeah okay. so i would say yeah something with the uh, nutrition because i'm really okay. interested in it and yeah i'm always you know trying to to eat healthy and to inform myself um, what i can do better or what is helping the body to recover faster and so yeah i feel like it's I would be something like that. Yeah. I guess this is, uh, this is this is now a thing in tennis. Everybody's talking about nutrition, nutrition more than ever. So it's really important to to see that that every player now has this on the schedule. Yeah. And every day is important because you have to know what you're eating. Yeah. I mean, I think there are still a lot of players who are not really taking care of it, but right. it's. It's also different. If you still feel good and ready to compete, it's fine. But in in my case, I don't feel well when I'm not eating well. I don't feel like ready to compete. My body feels, I don't know, tired. So heavy. Yeah, heavy. So that's why I'm just really trying uh, trying to to take care of it. Okay. What's your favorite place for a holiday? Mm -hmm. um, so this year I've never been there, but I'm I'm gonna do a safari. Oh so wow! So that's gonna be really exciting. Everybody's answering like beaches. And yeah, mountains. but um, uh, unfortunately where? South Africa, because okay. I, I wanted to go to Botswana or like really to an African uh, country, but um, yeah, it's not possible because of malaria. Mm -hmm. So we are going to South Africa. Oh, it's fine, South Africa. Yeah, I mean, for it's, this, it's still for this good. Kind of yes, event, it's still good. This kind of activity. So, um, yeah, but of course, the beach is always a good idea. Yeah. What is the song that you're now listening on repeat? Right now, it's I cannot even tell you the name, but it's Felix Yen. I won't. I won't, I won't ask you to to, to sing it. No, I, I I mean I cannot <laughs> sing it, but um, yeah, it's Felix Yin. But what is the name? Something with love. I don't know. Good. Something with love yeah, is yes. good. I accept. It's it. good. Perfect. The beat is really good, and you feel like it's you know. All right. A bit pumped. And now, so well, the related questions. Which is your TV series that you always enjoy to watch? You're coming back over and over again, maybe. I watched Grey's Anatomy twice, so wow. okay. I would say Grey's Anatomy. Um, but I'm not really watching TV, so it's more like a, let's say Netflix series. Yeah, everybody's watching um, Netflix now. I mean, it's not coming on Netflix, but still. Um, so yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. And now at the end, the question from Porsche: What? Do you like more flying or driving? Driving. Really? Yeah, yeah I prefer driving. We also drove to um, from Budapest to Parma. It was like nine hours, and yeah, I like it. I mean, if we have the chance to drive to a tournament, I prefer doing that because Perfect. we can. Of nice. course, my coach is driving, In and Europe, then I can just, you know, <laughs> chill, chill, and we talk, and yeah. Cool. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And see you again in the next tournament. Yes. And I wish you good luck. Thank you very much. You will have a great career. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>